You gotta learn from your losses, just the victory, baby. I've done it. What's going on? It's your boy Calvin with another one. Hey, man, you know, I just want to tell you guys that I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you watching. This video is going to be talking about, I know you've been waiting on it. It's, it's basically the good and the bad and the ugly with the Detroit Land Bank. I said I wasn't going to make this type of video, but at the end of the day, I got to be transparent. You know, at the end of the day, I appreciate the Land Bank and I appreciate all that they do at the end of the day. Uh, but it hasn't been a uh, easy ride. And I'm going to tell you about the things that I had to deal with. You know, I'm 13 properties in, you know, um, <clears throat> and that's side lots, houses, all that good stuff, commercial, all that. So we could just start with the first property I purchased was the house that I was originally going to rent out. But then as time went on, it was like it didn't make sense for me to rent this property out and <clears throat> and I'm renting somewhere else. So it made sense for me to make this my home. So um, when I initially purchased the property, I went in, I was an owner now house, I placed my thousand dollar bid, I didn't have any competition, I won the bid. And then I went through the assessment process, which they checked to make sure you don't have any foreclosures, blight tickets, et cetera, uh, tax liens, any, all that stuff, they check all that. So <clears throat> um, I ran into, two issues they got me and my father mixed up so i had to prove that i wasn't my father then on top of that i had to prove that i didn't have any tax debt so in the process of them saying like hey no you're being flagged for this and i was like no that's my father no this is paid and then they say okay you're good to go and then so i'm like thinking i'm good to go and so i'm sitting back chilling waiting for me to get my purchase agreement and all that good stuff I just so happen to look at the property again. I look on the owner now list. My, the house that I just won is back on the list within like three days after, about two days after me, you know, went in the bed. So I'm like, wait, hold on, what's going on? So I call up there. <clears throat> I'm like, hey, what's going on? It's like, oh, well, such and such, such, such and such. So I was like, skip this. I call off of work and I go straight up there. And after we got everything done, I ended up having, I had to rebid on this property and thank God no one bid it against me. Um, <clears throat> but luckily the management team over at the land bank got it fixed. I had to deal with a, um, a nice young lady. I think her name was Ani or something like that. She was a nice young lady. She was able to get the, everything fixed and everything like that. So the, the, one of the biggest problems that I had with the land bank in the beginning is that they, they hired a lot of temps, if I'm not mistaken. So those temps were, you know, as a temp, you know, too much don't really care about the job or whatever. And they just was like, you know, just there to be there. So a lot of people didn't, wasn't concerned about, you know, handling your business versus like a full-time employee would. So that was the biggest thing that I had to deal with far as dealing with the temps that didn't know all the information and it took so long for me to know how the process goes. Um, <clears throat> that was like the biggest drawback. Um, then the second house I purchased, same thing happened. They told me that this was fixed. Turn up, they got me mixed up with my father again. So I placed the bid. They saying like, hey, um, you got back tax debt, uh, back taxes owed on these properties. I said, "Help! That's not me. That's not me." Like, so I had to go. So this time I called off of work. I'm literally working. I called off of work. I'm going straight downtown because I got to see somebody face to face because I'm like, literally, I'm not about to deal with this again. Like you guys made me do this. So this time, this property I actually put in eleven hundred dollar bid, and <clears throat> do you understand? By the time I got downtown. Whoever looked at the profile decided that, hey, I probably wasn't going to fix the tax debt and just denied the application instead of giving me time to fix it. So by the time I got down there, I saw the same manager, Ani, uh, I think her name was Ani, and she was like, okay, well, she called down to the stairs, down to another office, like, hey, yeah, push that through. He's good. He's like, oh, well, I already rejected it. And because the land bank can't manually go in and make somebody to win and bidder. I had to bid on a process all, and wait all over again. I had to wait another three days. And the funniest thing that happened, I almost lost that house because 
typically when we went to bed on the house, we go and clean it up immediately. We don't just wait till anybody clean the property. We go and clean it up immediately. Um, <clears throat> what happened was is that I actually, we went there, cut all the trees down, made it look nice. And cause we thought we wanted to bid. And do you know some contractor and this guy looked like he had deep pockets. He pulled up in the driveway and was like, oh yeah, he was on the phone talking. We like, we drive by like, hold on, who's this and that? Oh, no, bro, no, nah, this house is spoken for, big fella. So we had the guy so confused, he went down to the land bank and was like, hey, um, is this house up for sale? Because it was two crazy guys out there. You know, it was a crazy guy out there talking about this is his house and everything. So I can't tell you exactly who did it, but I can just tell you it was a family member that pulled up on this guy and said, hey, what you doing in here? This our house. Don't gnaw. <laughs> so so funny that is, is that the funny thing was is that if we didn't do that he would have he would have found out that he had an opportunity to bid on that property it was so funny so because as soon as he decided to go downtown and question about it it was literally he just missed the bid by like an hour so <laughs> it was so funny but it was all because somebody in the land bank had messed up on you know that particular procedure because we I followed all the proper procedures um, <clears throat> and from there every time I made a purchase on a property they kept making the same mistake saying that hey um, oh you owe <clears throat> and it's not like my dad was always owed back on back taxes you know my dad has a bunch of properties and you know um, you know, when properties come due, if you got any tax bill that's due, like due, like due now or whatever, not even back, the link would just do now, you got to pay that before you, you know, make a purchase. So that was the biggest, uh, that was one of the biggest, fu the frustrating thing to do. Cause literally every time I had to bid on the house, it was literally always an issue with, uh, being, um, being able to be approved to, to purchase the property. I literally, every time I, I always had a problem with that. Um, <clears throat> what else did I have problems with? Um, then the apartment building, the apartment building. I bought that property and on the list it said that it, the water line wasn't cut. And then get the try to get the water cut on, the water line was cut. And also I ran into that issue again. I just thought about it. Um, with that property, when I bought the apartment building, they kept mixing me up with my father again. So they did that. They mixed me up with my father at least three or four times, you know, uh, and that in itself can be, you know, piss me off because literally <clears throat> the lady was, uh, this particular lady was telling me that I need to get a quick claim deed showing that I don't own the property. And I told her, I said, ma'am, I ain't never had to do that ever in my life. And what if me and my father is not on talk speaking terms? I, I'm not, he's not going to give me his quick claim deed to his property because you guys can't figure out which Calvin is which, you know, it was so crazy. And it was so frustrating. And then, um, from there, um, you know, I just said, skip it. I won't get the property. And, um, but luckily it ended up, uh, it ended up working out. And I end up getting the property. Um, <clears throat> I had to, you know, make some calls, and um, and I end up getting the property. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> I, I'm not gonna lie to you. It it is some anxiety that comes with uh, purchasing from the land bank. I'm not gonna lie to you. And anybody else that says it's an easy process, it's not an easy process, but it's the best process. Um, out there and the reason being is the best thing because I recently been through the whole getting a house on a, uh, through a mortgage and when I tell you I am a perfectionist so I literally analyze the whole thing and I, when I tell you <clears throat> giving these mortgage people all this information just for them to ask for it again and ask for it again and ask for it again is the most aggravating thing I can Oh my God, I was snapping and everything. It, it, but the fact is, is that, all right, wait, hold on. Before I even get there, let me think if there's anything else that I ran into that was an issue. 
Um, <sighs> also, you know, um, dealing with um, dealing with the land bank. So, say if you buy a house and it's a vacant house next door to your house. Nine times out of ten, the land bank owns that property. So if you got trees and stuff that's on your side of the prop, <clears throat> on that side of the property that's reaching on your side of the property, that was a hassle. I had a tree that actually was tearing up my driveway. I tried to get the land bank to cut it down, and literally I had to um, get on my BMW. One of the branches off that tree hit my BMW. So by this time. <clears throat> I called the land bank, said, this tree just fell on my BMW. <laughs> so he thought an actual tree fell on the BMW. It was so funny. But it was like, it was a nice sized tree, but it scratched my trunk. And um, I literally had to tell them that for them to get out there. Because I, I called, called, called. And apparently they have a budget on tree cutting. And they didn't want to waste it on my house. But <clears throat> they did, after going back and forth, probably for a week, um, they end up coming out trimming the trees. I later on end up buying that house because um, I ended up buying the house next door to my first house. So that's how that went. Um, then um, what else happened? Um, what else happened? Uh, what else happened? Dun, 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 dun. Trying to think. Um, okay, well, I can't think of any more bad, but let's talk about the good. Me being a young, young black man, um, being able to buy a house without taking out no loans or anything like that, and just you know having a thousand dollars. And then uh, at closing, I had to bring a five hundred fifty dollars at closing, so it was really fifteen hundred dollars. That was my first purchase. That was <clears throat> one of the most empowering things um, in my life, I guess. I hope I'm using the right words, but the fact that just to be able to purchase a property and this is mine, meaning that no one can ever tell me you got to get out, you know that right there in itself done so much for me be, for me being homeless not being able to have somewhere to call home being able to have something that's mine that i could pass down it's you know because owning land is like that's that's wealth you know because land is power because they're not going to make any more new land um they allowed me to do that you know so um that's why I appreciate them, the whole land bank idea. Yeah, everything is not perfect, you know, but it is what it is, you know. Um, for for somebody coming from, you know, minor, being a minority, um, being able to own something that's yours and no one can control whatever it is, you know, and you can, you know, that whole concept is is, is just awesome. You know, you can, you can, you can take your time with it. You know, like at the end of the day, <clears throat> how much does drywall cost? Drywall, two sheets, you spend about what, thirteen dollars, thirteen some dollars, and that's your wall. That's your wall that's that's knocked down somewhere in the house that you need to patch up a hole. Dr dr paint, plaster, thirteen dollars for a whole bucket. Patch up the holes. You know, doors. You can take your time. Look at the time, look at the, the money that you waste on certain things and you can put that into your house, you know? Like I said before, you spend $800 a month in rent, that's $10,000 a year you're investing into somebody else's dream, you know, when you can be investing into your house. So um, <clears throat> that's like the biggest thing that <laughs> the land bank allowed me to have. And then on top of that, it is, it's a lot of good people that work there that are um that are concerned with uh you being successful you know um <clears throat> i have heard in the past that people had some terrible compliance agents i have had nothing but great compliance uh agents um you know because i'm very transparent you know like i told them i say look hey 
I work two jobs. I'm working two jobs. I'm taking care of the whole family. I'm gonna get it done. Like, just give me some time, you know, I'm doing <laughs> doing what I gotta do, you know. So, um, that that being said, you know, it's definitely some great people over there that's working. Um, and then on on top of that, I was able. I think I was the only person actually. I was uh, given the honor to speak at a closing event to talk about my experiences with um, with the land bank and closing at the land bank, you know? Um, so <clears throat> that was awesome in, in itself, you know, me being able, me, me being allowed to do that, you know, because that was my first speaking event um, ever. And I'm not the best person to be talking to people, <clears throat> you know, talking to people in big crowds, you know? So that definitely was awesome. And, um, and as I, as I always say in my other videos, get up and go get it, you know? Cause, um, you, you, you what's the word I want to use? Only you going to be concerned about you being successful. You know, I mean, you may have some people that, that, uh, that say that they're concerned, but it's really is up to you to do it and get up and go get it because uh, it's out there. Now, right now, actively, <clears throat> it is hard right now to buy a house because you have so many entities that have deep pop, deep pockets and they're, they're buying up the houses or whatever. So, you know, that thousand dollar house is more like five thousand dollars i feel like <clears throat> so you, you just gotta move accordingly you have to save a little bit more money and the best thing about it is i'm here um i'm personally like i told everybody i am retiring from <laughs> buying homes from the detroit land bank but i probably still will buy homes from the detroit land bank but it won't be for me it'd be for my family be for family members, you know, for family members that are looking to to get their own homes and stuff like that. So I'll be utilizing, you know, I'll be doing that for my family. So that way, when it comes to, <clears throat> you know, uh, dealing with the land bank, I know how to deal with the land bank. So that way they don't have to wor worry about me, them telling me, oh, cause they told me this and they told me that, no. No, they come t now. They can come talk to me. You know, this is how it's supposed to go. So that's that's the only reason why I'll be purchasing homes. It will not be for me or building my business or anything like that. No, it'll be solely for building my family's my family's wealth. And when I mean family, I mean cousins, aunties, uncles, all that. You know. So I hope this was informational to you. Uh, I hope this helped you guys out. And for the people that actually watched to the end, please subscribe to my channel. Leave a like. If you got a question, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to follow me on uh, Instagram at um, Hero Squad underscore PM. Um, also, don't forget to um, join my group called uh, Building Detroit Investors. Um, and I thank you for your time. You guys have a great day.